Hello my beauties, uh, welcome back, thanks for tuning in. Uh, do you want my jumper? My uh, dear old mama um, knitted this for me, um, but it has chewed one of the buttons because that's just the type of scallywag he is, but still we're rocking it today and it is feeling rather autumny outside, so I thought it was appropriate. Right, so today we're going to be talking about pencils. Um, I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, stop right there, this is far too much excitement for a Wednesday. Well, it's Wednesday for me, I have no idea what day it is for you. Um, however, if you want to do graphite drawings, um, or that is of your interest, or anything like that, I do think it's important to know some of your real basics. It's all very well looking at pictures of, I don't know, eyeballs and tigers and doggies and thinking, oh yeah, I want to um, I wanna um, draw that. But if you don't know what sort of equipment you can use, what the equipment does, what the different pencils mean, papers, um, then you're not going to get anywhere any fast, and then you'll just feel crappy about yourself and you'll give up. And I don't want you to give up, I want you to become a great artist. So, Let's crack on. Also, look, I have to stop me from waffling today, which I know technically that's what I'm doing now. I've given myself a little list so that I can stay on track. Very organised of me. Very organised of me. Right, let's go. Right, let's crack on, my lovelies. So before we start looking at the things that we can use, let's look at what we can do with pencils. So please enjoy a seamless link into some of my work. Excellent. Right. Now, so first of all, when I'm drawing in graphite pencil, I always work on a drawing board. Um, the same drawing boards that I've spoken about before in various watercolour um, tutorials. Um, I just find that if it's, it's fine working on a table, it's hard, it's flat, you know, that might be what you've got. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, but it can be quite tricky to keep your paper clean if you're working on a table. table. Because if you're anything like me, you can be a bit of a mucky pup. And um, there can be various, I don't know, food, paint, pen on it. And you would hate to draw a really superb drawing and then ruin it because you happen to, you know, get spaghetti bolognese on it. So I find working on a drawing board really easy. Also, it means that you can kind of pick things up and take them and move them away and keep them safe somewhere because working in graphite pencil... Um, obviously it can smudge so you do have to be a little bit careful with it so yeah I always work on a um, drawing board right let's look at pencils a pencil is not just a pencil so here we've got I use various different brands these aren't your pencils that say you went to your local corner shop and you picked up I mean you can use them they're fine but if we have a look so the three different brands that I tend to use are Faber and Castell I also sometimes use Derwent and my new favourite is Tombow or Tombow, I don't know how you pronounce it but um, somebody bought these for me and I really like them and so I tend to use these three. My favourite are these ones, then probably the Faber and Castell and then the Derwent ones, that's just my own personal favourite, just because they're my favourite doesn't mean that the other ones aren't as good or anything like that. It's just kind of like, I've used a lot of them and those are the ones I like. But again, I'm not fussy. If I can't find my Tom Bow ones, I'll just pick up the Faber and Castell. It's absolutely fine. Right, let's have a look. So, I do not want to um, explain 2 plus 2 to you, but grades of our graphite pencils. Right, I'm going to try and not be like waffly here. So, our middle pencil is an HB. H stands for hard, B stands for black. That's kind of our middle point, our neutral, I suppose. We can then work up and down from there. And what I mean by that is, if I show you a couple here, up from that is a 2B. Then we have a 6B, put that there. And then we have something like an 8B there. And if we work back the other way, we have an H, we have a 2H, 
and I have actually got a 7H somewhere, but I haven't got it to hand, and a 3H. So what does that mean? Because at the moment, they're just numbers and letters and don't mean anything. B stands for black. So the higher the number, the blacker the pencil is. Or another way to think of it is the softer the graphite is. So I will demonstrate in a minute so you will get an idea. H stands for hard. So the higher the number, the harder the graphite is. So you will get a, uh, do you know what? It's easier to demonstrate instead of me like waffling on about. So if I show you, right, let's have a look. So if we look at our HB here, just basic shade in there like that and a line. That kind of looks like most pencil work that we all we all see, we all recognise. So I'll write H, B there. Right, now, if I then work towards our softer end, our blacker end, so if we look at a 2B here, and I'm applying the same pressure, can you see the difference in that? And again, our line, so that's a 2B much darker, much blacker. You'll also find, and again, it's difficult to see this on camera, but you will feel it, that the graphite spreads better. And again, now, so if we work our way right down to our 8B, into a line, you can see, again, the difference there. Now, working the other way, so if I show you, I'll go straight in for the 3H. If I try shading with the 3H, oh, actually, <laughs> you can't shade with the 3H, but you can see the difference there. And if I show you, you'll probably see the, I feel like I'm lying to you guys. Um, if I show you the difference here with the line and the feel of it, look, that's really easy to see there where I've written that. Can you see how you've got that kind of really sharp, sharp edges on the 2H? So what you're looking at really is when you're, you, so how are we going to use these pencils in real time? That's, that will make it easier for you to understand. So, yeah, HB, I think, is excellent for sketching. It's really good for um, doing an outline of a drawing that you're doing. It's very good for um, doing grids and things like that. Because because what you find is is where the graphite is harder, it doesn't disintegrate in the same way that some of the blacker, softer pencils do. So I find them really good for your initial outline of a drawing or sketching. When you're working down to a two B a 6B or an 8B, we're now starting to work on our shading. So I find the 8Bs and 6Bs are very good for creating shading and coverage over large areas, but not necessarily very good at um, creating detail. I find the 2Bs are very good at creating dark detail because the graphite is harder um, but we've still got a bit of intensity to it. It's still quite dark. The hard pencils, generally speaking, in sort of, I suppose, like broad terms, the hard pencils are um, brilliant for a lot of graphite, like, like graphic designers might use them if you're drawing um, technical drawings and things like that because they're really, really precise. I also find them really great for creating very, very tiny, minute bits of detail um, on quite complex drawings. Because, again, like I said, when you're using some of the softer pencils, because of the way that the graphite kind of, I don't want to use the word disintegrates, but kind of softens, you sometimes get those fluffy edges. So, like, if I show you here... If I'm doing that, can you see that it's got, there's quite a lot of diameter to that there. However, if I do this with my 3H, 
much finer detail. There we go. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense anyway, because I've never really spoken about this to anybody. It's just something I do. So I hope that makes sense. So let's move on to our broader set of equipment that we might use in a graphite drawing. Um, if you have any questions about what we've just talk, spoken about with the pencils in regards to the twos, the six, the Bs, the Hs and all that sort of stuff, um, just let me know. I can answer anything for you um, because when we haven't used them very, very much, when we're not that experienced with them, like you sometimes feel like it's a silly question to ask, but it's not a silly question to ask at all. You don't know until you know anything. So, yes, let's move on to the broader set of equipment that we can use. Let's have a look. I'm going to show you this. So this is a big mama pencil right here. This is known as a graphite stick. It is essentially what runs through the middle of our graphite pencils. It is the drawing. This, however, is chunky and not covered in wood. I know. Obvious, Steph. But yes. Um, so this is, you can see on here, I don't know whether the camera's picking it up on it, but it's like kind of embossed on it. This is 9B. So that means nine levels of blackness. And if I show you, you can see there, like very difficult to get any kind of detail with that, but excellent and superb at coverage of large, large areas. I would only ever really use these in the first instance of a drawing. So if I have a large area to cover and I want to cover it very, very quickly, I will use these. Um, I also might use this for a background. You know, if you want a kind of soft, um, subtle, I don't know, smoky background, these can be really, really good. Because with pencils, because you've got such a sort of finer point on pencils, Sometimes, if, A, covering a large area will just take you forever with that. B, if you want that kind of um, no-marked, soft background, very difficult to get when you're working it with a point. Whereas with a large kind of flat area like that, almost a little bit more like a charcoal stick, far, far easier. Also, you can do this. Let me show you. Now, if you please be careful with this. This is a scalpel. Obviously, it is sharp, but... You can do this with a graphite stick, and I have done this before, and it is very good for backgrounds, is scratching off some of the graphite onto our paper. Now, this seamlessly links us into other things that we need to use. So, this is a cotton pad. I use a cotton pad for blending and for smudging graphite. Never, ever, ever use your fingers or hands. Even the cleanest of hands, you have no idea how much of our kind of like sweat and grease is on them. If you smudge graphite with your fingers, you will get marks on your paper and they are marks that you cannot remove. I made the mistake foolishly of um, accidentally doing it um, literally last week and completely and utterly ruined the drawing because there was just this giant great big fingerprint in the middle of my drawing that I just could not cover so we use this for large areas I mean everybody's got one of these cotton wool cotton pads you can use tissue but tissue tends to kind of like dissolve a little bit but let me show you so I just kind of wrap it around my finger like that and you're basically pushing look at that pushing the graphite into the tooth of the paper. Look at that, see? Can you see there how here, where we've done a, I suppose your traditional kind of drawing motion, we have marks in the, not marks in the paper, but you can see the brush strokes or the strokes of your hand. Here, we have none of that because we've literally used the graphite um, and pushed it into the paper kind of using no marks whatsoever. So that is excellent for backgrounds, subtle backgrounds, skies, um, shading, brilliant. You can also obviously use these when you've made marks like that. So let me show here. But what you will find is, like if you look, we are definitely getting blending there. 
but you can still see the marks on there. I haven't been overly careful when I've um, drawn there, but you can still see the marks. The one thing I would say with using that technique where you are scraping off the graphite off a graphite stick onto the paper is it's quite difficult to get really, really black or dark with that. I'm sorry, my camera ran out of memory space there, so I kind of got caught in the middle. I believe I was talking about um, our graphite stick and that if you were wanting a very dark background, that it is quite difficult to get that by just scraping off this. Um, so you, in that case, you might want to use something a bit more direct, um, either with your technique or with one of the pencils. So I have completely lost my train of thought because of that now. Right, so other things to do with blending. So the other things that I like to use are, um, these are called smudge sticks or blending tools. I don't know, it depends on, it doesn't really matter. So if you look, they're, they're basically just paper and they've got pencil ends. Now, the difference between this and say this here is, is because you've got the pencil ends and because they come in different sizes, you can be far more direct with your shading with this so you are not going to want to use even the big one really for shading in large areas because again you are going to get very you're going to find it very difficult to get a nice seamless coverage like we have here or it's just you're just going to get achy hands from having to work so hard however if you are working on something quite small um like an eye or some hair or the inside of an ear or you know like tree branches or kind of delicate areas you need something a little bit more precise um i actually sort of think whether or not i can show you on an actual real life piece of mine hold the line callers oh, i can't reach it that is a beautiful view of me right let's have a look so if we see here if you're working on something like this, you are not going to want to use this round the eyeball or on any of the texture because you want to blend out very, very small areas. So these fine um, smudge sticks work excellent for that. So if we look here, be careful not to smudge it with my hands. Like if I wanted to see this line here and I wanted to blend that out a bit and get a bit of shading in there, I can use the direct edge of the smudge stick. If I was working on an area that was slightly larger, so say I wanted to blend out the dark down here to kind of create more depth in through here, that larger smudge stick will work really well. And what's nice is that you can adjust the pressure that you apply to this. Um, accordingly so you don't have to ram it into the paper you can really do it really gently so here i'm going to do it here because it doesn't really matter so i can use that end there that has got graphite on and actually use that almost to draw with in a really soft blend there so these are so so important to any of my graphite drawing i use them religiously and again it stops you from using fingers if you haven't got any of these and i mean these are really really cheap you can pick them up anywhere like off of um that popular um website that likes to deliver next day any kind of craft shop anything like that you can pick them up and they are super super cheap and you can get them in bulk um but if you don't have it available to you today you can also use our good old q-tip not quite as direct and as delicate as our smudge stick, but nonetheless, it still works really well. So again, if I wanted to blend out this area here, I can do. You can see it doesn't quite carry the graphite in the same way that the smudge sticks do, but nonetheless, it does a great job. Right, next on my list of things to use is various rubbers, erasers, whatever you want to want to call them right let me move this out the way go back to our drawing here so this is your traditional rubber there is nothing fancy about this whatsoever um i use this for 
erasing large areas. So if I have, I don't know, smudged it with the side of my hand or anything like that, I will use this for get, to get rid of large areas. It does a pretty decent job of it. Great, you know, getting rid of large areas. Putty rubber. Now, let me show you this. They tend to come in a little, um, oh my goodness me, I cannot get into it. What is wrong with me? Hold on a minute. Don't worry, you all just wait here. I literally cannot get into this. Why can I not get into this? Oh my God. Oh, there we go. <laughs> right. Might delete that bit out, guys, so I don't look like an idiot. Right, so putty rubber. <laughs> It looks like blue tack, but it's not. It won't stick anything to the walls. Um, although I have heard people using blue tack, but yeah, it's essentially a stretchy eraser. Now I use this, I, I don't use this for, you can, but I don't use this for rubbing out large areas. As you can see, it doesn't have quite um, the same ability as this one. However, this is excellent for picking up graphite off the paper so what do i mean by that let me show you so if i make a little pointy end with this can you see that that so i have lightened a whole area without having to rub the paper because the downside to erasing and rubbing out on a piece of paper is is Ultimately, paper is relatively delicate. If we are constantly rubbing out, what happens is, is you start to destroy the paper and the paper starts to flake away. Um, so it's a great way of lifting out pencil if you have perhaps gone too deep um, with your shading. Again, I'll show you here. And you can see that how it kind of gets stuck in the putty rubber. Um, so it's great for lifting out areas of shading where you've perhaps gone too dark um, without causing any damage to the surface of the paper whatsoever. And it also doesn't leave any residue behind. So it's not like how I said, you know, with our fingers, where if we leave grease marks on the paper, you'll never get rid of them. It's not like that at all. Again, if I bring in my drawing that I'm doing here and I would kind of demonstrate, because this is another great thing, is... If we have a look here, we've got lots of textures going on here. If I've perhaps gone a little bit dark in an area and I I want to lift it up, but I've done quite a lot of work with detail, so I don't want to lose that detail. Again, putty rubber is your job. So if I look here, you can see I've got some lines and veins there. If I want to pick out and make it a little bit lighter, I can do that with the putty rubber without losing that detail. So that is what a putty rubber is absolutely excellent for. And then the last one is the very, very thin eraser. So this is a little bit, and looks a little bit like a technical pencil. So if you look, let's show you on the back of my nail there, very, very fine end of a rubber there. Um, and you can get refills for them. So when they run out and what you would do is you click the end like that whenever it's sort of run out on the end or you want a bit of length. I use this for creating highlights in pieces of work. So if we show here. Yeah, so we can actually, I quite often draw with this. So you might have created your shading and then I might draw in this with the rubber. This is what I use this for. It is no good for um, rubbing out large areas of um, pencil because it will just destroy really, really, really quickly. Um, but yeah, excellent for this. I would, Again, this is one of my must-haves I always have when I am drawing in graphite. The other thing that I use quite often, it is a pencil, yes, but it is a bog standard, really cheap technical pencil that you can just click the end and um, get more graphite out. Again, I use this, which is great for creating really fine, very dark lines. The graphite in this is really hard. Um, and I just think 
it kind of it never really needs sharpening because you just click the ends of it and i just find it so so useful for you know very fine hairs very fine whiskers really minute detail that you want dark um yeah again i use this all the time and this is literally cheap as chips it is there is nothing fancy no specific um qualities to it whatsoever right the other thing we need who knew there were so many sharpeners out on the market there we go, there's Big Bertha. So, sharpener. I am a stickler for I believe you have to have super, super sharp pencils for drawings. Other people will disagree with me. Some people um, might like super blunt pencils, and that is entirely up to you. There are no rules in art, that's the best thing. Um, however, I like super sharp pencils. So, here you've got your normal everyday pencil sharpener. You will see that there are um, different blades on this so they create a slightly different point on the pencil um so again they're not that expensive that's quite good this one here obviously it collects your um off cuts in there you'll find it has got the slightly larger holes so some pencils you might have particularly if you're using colored pencils or even like charcoal sticks or anything like that don't fit into your standard pencil sharpener whereas this has got the various different sized holes so you can sharpen anything in there and then this is my absolute favorite i mean look at it is it not a thing of beauty guys i've got to demonstrate this you will love this i love this i mean look at the point on that just look at that the only thing you do have to be careful of is that you don't enjoy it so much that you basically chew up all your pencils um <laughs> because it does not know when to stop i mean there are thingies on it so maybe it does but the setting i have it on it does not know where to stop so i could literally shove my pencil in it and it eat the entire thing might be worth it though to do it brilliant right next on we are on to paper okie dokie my lovelies paper um so when we're looking at paper and the type of papers that we're going to use what we're really looking at is is the paper suitable for what we want to produce and the medium that we want to use on it. Obviously today we've been looking at graphite, so I'm gonna be looking at papers that I use with my graphite pencils and what they're good for, what, ne not, what they're not necessarily good for. The two things we look at with paper is weight and um, the texture, the surface texture. Um, those are the two things that we are gonna be looking at and I'm sure you've heard me before and in other tutorials refer to the weight of paper. Um, so something for us to understand that is tangible in regards to the weight, because obviously nobody's going to get the scales out and stick the paper on it, um, it is the feel of the paper, how thick the paper is. So the heavier weight paper uh, is thicker, the less weight, the thinner it is. So something like this, this is just computer paper, and you can see this is very lightweight, there is no kind of durability to it whatsoever. And if we move on to something that's a bit more heavyweight like this, you can see it definitely has that more card-like feel. The other thing, like I said, we're looking at is the surface. So you can get rough surfaces and you can get smooth surfaces. Again, there is no right or wrong in what paper you use for what. It is down quite often to personal preference and the type of effect you get. So if you find you prefer a completely different paper to me, um, that is absolutely fine, like, like you go ahead. If you can create the work that you want to create on that sort of paper, that's brilliant. Let's have a look at what I've got. So a sketchbook generally tends to be lighter weight paper, more like your kind of cartridge paper um, feel. They tend to range from round about 90 grams to 160 for your slightly more upmarket, more expensive ones. This one here is quite lightweight, so this is 90 grams. And you can see that the paper has got a lot of flexibility in it. There's a lot of movement to it. The other thing to notice is that the texture on here is quite heavy. So what I mean by that is if I... do that there you can see the marks of the paper i want to make sure yeah that's it um you can see the grain of the paper the tooth of the paper um so if you were trying to create really really fine detail on a surface like this a 
the weight of the paper just isn't durable enough to kind of take a lot of smudging, a lot of pushing the pencil in, a, a heavy load of pencil. And also you're going to find it difficult to get really fine details when you've got such a uh, rough surface on there. So really what you want to use this sort of thing for is your sketching, plotting out things, figuring out things, um, I don't want to use the word doodle, but doodling, perhaps note taking, things like that. They're kind of your, it's your first instance. When you want to create a piece of artwork, it's your first go to. Let's go to the sketchbook on nice, cheap, easy paper where you can make all the mistakes in the world. Here, I'll just show you here. This is also a sketch pack pad, but this one is the 160. So although it's small, this you can see, you can see straight away there. There's a bit more weight to that. There's a bit more durability to that. Now, I have found that when I'm creating final pieces, I personally, particularly with graphite pencil, and I suppose because I'm working in such detail, I like a really, really smooth surface. Now, you do need a bit of tooth to the paper otherwise the graphite just will slide off of it you, as you can see from the beginning of our tutorial graphite is essentially a powder which is why you can smudge it and move it um if you had no grain whatsoever on the paper it just wouldn't grab to the surface you do need a little bit of um i don't know what the word is do you know what i mean a little bit of texture to it however i find my favourite type of pen to paper to do pencil drawings on is hot press watercolour paper. Now, hot press watercolour paper, if I show you here, is smooth watercolour paper. So it's not like what we think of as our traditional watercolour paper, which is that heavily textured, wavy paper. It is very, very smooth. It has the same weight as our cold press watercolour paper, which is 300 grams. And look, you can see from that, it feels almost like card, but I don't know whether the camera is picking it up, but it has got an incredibly smooth surface. So this here is out of this pad. And so you can see when we've done some of our effects here and some of our blending, there is very, very little um texture coming through from the paper and any texture that is there it's very easy to push the graphite into it so you get a really nice um silky surface for your drawings so this cold press hot press sorry um watercolor paper i find superb for detailed drawings another one of my favorites this isn't actually watercolor paper um, this is Strathmore Bristol Smooth Surface. So this is a um, graphite, you know, pen um, pad, not for watercolour. It's slightly lighter than the hot press watercolour paper. This is actually only 270 grams. But, well, I'll show you here, it is perfectly adequate for what we want to do and it does have the the sort of smoother surface um you could possibly want it is a little bit pricier so i would reserve this sort of paper for your final pieces for work that is important to you um because you just don't want to waste this paper this is not sketching paper this is final piece paper um, but yeah, uh, this Strathmore Bristol surface, um, smooth surface, is my favourite. If you are confused at all about different papers, ask. There, are, like, it's not a silly question. If you're in any kind of art store or anything like that, just go in and ask them and say, "What papers would you recommend? I want to use ink, I want to use pencil, or I want to create this type of work." And they will steer you in the right direction. Also, quite often. On the cover of the pad that you may pick up, they usually have um, the information on there, what they recommend you using it with. So here it says pen and ink. Um, and again, you will always find at some point on the paper here, it's written here, 270 grams, um, the weight of it. And again, you know, the higher the number, the heavier weight paper, the more durable it is. 
on here we'll look, see, 300 grams. Um, so the, the, most of the time, the information is on the cover, making it super easy for you. You can get even more heavyweight paper than this. I think it goes up to 600 grams. I personally have never used it. I've never had a need to use it, but you can get that. Um, also, experiment. You, you don't really know what you will like as an artist or what you will find works for you until you try. Quite often, a lot of... Um, paper companies, particularly if you go to the actual source rather than through a, um, you know, somebody that sells it for them, um, do sample packs. So they'll send you out a sample pack of all different papers and it might be heavy textured, heavyweight paper, or it might be smooth surface, but lighter. And just have a real good play and feel with your pencils and see what it is that you like, um, what works for you. Um, because we really don't know until we try. Um, Thanks for tuning in guys. I know it's been a little bit wordy today and we haven't actually created a piece of artwork but it is important to know these things and quite often they're not the sort of things that you usually find on a tutorial so I hope it's been really helpful to you um, and you've gotten something else out of it. If you could possibly like, follow, subscribe, share, let everybody know that I exist that would be amazing and I'd be forever grateful but until next time I shall see you soon.